Today we're gonna to dive into the new Figma grids and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to start using them in your own projects. We're also gonna be creating a bento grid, so stay tuned for that tutorial towards the end of this video. But with that said, let's get started. First off, if you haven't had a chance to check out the Figma grid and play around with it a bit, here's everything you need to know. When you have a frame selected, we have flow under the layout options now. Previously, we had to activate auto layout to see the vertical and horizontal. Now we just have this flow menu to choose from. The default is freeform. If I just put a rectangle in here, it's nested inside of this frame. I can just freely align it wherever I would like because there's no layout being applied to this frame currently. If we swap that over to vertical, You'll see our frame automatically adjust based off our padding values, gap, and alignment. And most importantly, it's stacking content vertically here inside of this frame. Same thing for horizontal. All of our content is stacking horizontally inside of the frame. And finally, we have the grid option, which is new, and it's currently in beta. If we select that, you'll see we have a 2 by 2 show up here creating what I'm gonna be referring to as four grid cells. So we have one, two, three, and four. If you quickly select the grid, there is a quick access drag and drop feature that allows you to easily set the columns and rows very quickly, or more precisely up here at the top, you can specify exactly how many rows and columns you want on your grid. If you already have some content inside of your frame when you select to add a grid, Figma will try its best to give you the best grid layout for that content. Usually you'll only need a few adjustments to make the layout look good with the Figma grid. Next we have two gap options. We have between the columns, so we can stretch that out if you'd like. And we have between the rows, so if I scale that up, you can see we go between the rows there. I'm gonna set them to 48 for now on both of those. Then we have the padding on the sides, so if I scale that up, you can see it adds padding on the outside of all of the grid cells. And we can do the same on the top and bottom there. Of course, if you want to adjust the padding individually, you can always select this icon here. And you can say increase the top to 70 for whatever reason you want. If you've been using Figma for a while, you'll be pretty familiar with a lot of these settings as gap and padding is used on pretty much every frame throughout Figma. So next, let's talk about the individual grid cells themselves. Each one can have their own group of elements inside of them, their own frame, their own grid inside of them even. So you can think of them as frames almost. So if I actually drag a frame out here and I'm just going to give it a quick gray fill so we can see it, you'll see that it automatically nests inside of this grid cell and I can now align it however I'd like. So I can line it on the right, I can line it on the bottom, or I can just have this thing fill the entire container. And if I were to scale this frame, my rectangle there is automatically going to adjust with the rest of the grid. So behaving very similar to auto layout. Now, if I don't want this here and I want to drag this to another grid cell, I can just drag and drop it there. Or if I want it to take up more than one, I can just drag it over here and drop it. And you'll see down here at the bottom, it's now a two by one. And I can do the same thing up here. And you can see it's now a two by two. And we can still freely drag this around very easily. Using grids feels pretty intuitive. Next, you might've noticed some of these dots showing up here. There's actually one for each column and for each row. By default, they're automatically set to auto. So you can think of this as, since this is a four by four, each one of these is one fourth of the width and one fourth of the height, obviously excluding all the padding we have adjusted here. But you can set these to specific values if you want. Currently, I don't think we can do percentage values, but you can do pixel values. So if I wanted this to be 72 pixels tall, I can set that to 72 pixels tall for something like a nav bar. And you can freely adjust all of these to different sizes if you'd like. So if I drag this rectangle to fill the entire top row, which is now a four by one, and you can see it's set to 72 pixels. No matter how I scale my frame, this will always remain 72 pixels tall, giving us a little bit more control with our custom layout using this new grid feature. I'll just set it back to auto for now, and we can delete that rectangle. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about grids. If you have any questions, you can leave those down in the comments. Now let's make a sweet looking bento grid right after this break. 
If you're tired of designing from scratch on all of your new projects, meet 8-Point. 8-Point is an ever-growing design system for Figma. 8-Point has a soft four-point grid to make sure everything aligns properly, customizable components to give you control in your designs, and variables to swap themes with ease. This isn't just a one-time release, as 8-Point will be updated on a monthly basis. And once you purchase 8-Point, you have free updates for life. If you want to check out 8-Point, you can go over to 8-Point.io. That's 8PT.io, or there's a link at the top of the description. If you want to know if 8-Point is right for you, you can click the preview in Figma in the top right and look through all the components and the entire file before you purchase just to make sure. With all that said though, let's get back to the video. So to get started with our bento grid, the first thing we need is a bunch of different cards because we can't have a bento grid without some actual elements to put in it. So let's go over here into the pasteboard, hit F for the frame tool, and I'm just going to drag out just a perfect square, just holding shift. Doesn't really matter the size because we're gonna be adjusting this with auto layout. So for now, we'll just start with this. Let's just create a few basic card templates and then you can feel free to edit them in any way you want. Uh, so first, I'm just gonna add some corner radius to this of 32, adding a lot of rounded corners for a nice design aesthetic there. And we'll kind of wireframe these out a little bit. I'm gonna grab another frame and I'm gonna hold shift and option and just drag out a perfect square frame there. And this time I'm gonna have maybe 12 rounded on the corners and we'll set that to gray. And then I'm just gonna scale this up until it looks like a good size. And we'll throw an auto layout on this. It doesn't really matter if we do vertical or horizontal, we're just gonna center align it. And then we'll adjust the padding all around to 80. And the gap we don't really need, so I'll just set it to zero. This first card, I'm just gonna have a simple logo in the middle. So I'm gonna fill that in in a minute. So I'll just call this logo card. Then let's create another one. This one, we're gonna have a few different app icons. So I'll just call it app card. And for this one, we're gonna swap it to horizontal. And I'm just gonna copy and paste uh, four or five of these in here. And then we'll need to set a gap now. So let's try 24. That's naturally going to stretch the card out. And on this one, I want to remove the padding on the sides. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna have this kind of fade on each side. So what I'll do here is add a new fill on top of this one. We're gonna set it to white at 100% opacity. And we're gonna change it to a linear. And then we'll just rotate that so that it is fading to pure white on the right side. And we can play around with where we want it to start fading. I'm gonna go with somewhere around here. Then I'm just gonna copy that fill, paste it over here. And all we have to do here is rotate that around. So now we can add some app icons in there and it kind of looks like it's going infinitely. I'm gonna copy the logo card again and just delete that square. Let's make a data card. So for this, all we need is some text. So T on the keyboard. I'm gonna type in some text there. And we're gonna need two sizes of text, one for a heading and one for the subheading. So for now, let's just put like 200K, maybe it's a number. And 96 bold looks good, we'll copy that. And for the subheading, maybe 20 at a medium weight. And let's just say, new followers. Now, since we copied the logo card, we have the auto layout set up on here. We're just in the vertical. We just need a gap. Let's try 24, too much, 16, uh, maybe even lower, maybe, maybe eight. That looks good. Copy that. Maybe we'll have two data cards. This one, let's delete the big number. And then let's just make this kind of like a, maybe a, a quote or something. So we'll set it to 32. And then I'm just gonna generate a sentence with form ipsum real quick. Boom. And then we'll set this to a certain width, something like that. And then maybe let's have this card a little taller and have it align to the top left. And let's reduce the padding on the top and bottom to something like 48 and on the sides as well. I'm just gonna call that one sentence card. And let's do one more data card, except this time we'll just drag that on top there. 
let's set the gap to auto and let's drag this card a little bit taller and let's align it to the left. And again, we're gonna lower the padding here to 48 and 48 and let's drag this a bit wider. So we've got a few different cards here to play around with. Now with those created, let's grab our frame and here we'll turn on the grid and let's try a three by three. I'll just click and drag that out. And for now, let's give it a color and I'm just setting mine to 181819 just so we can see the contrast on these white cards. And let's start dragging these in and see kind of what we want to do here. Let's maybe have the logo in the middle. And of course, we'll need to set this to fill so that it takes up the entire grid cell there. Let's have the paragraph stretching the bottom corner here. We'll have this basic card stretch in a two by one this way. Let's put the app card in the top. And then let's put the data cards up here. And we need one more card, so we'll copy this one. And put it there. Now let's update some padding to make this look a little better. So let's go with 24 on the gap and padding. And now we can adjust our frame a little bit. I don't want this to be more square, something like that. So now that we got that wireframe, we need to add a little bit more realistic looking copy in here. All right, so I got some basic content in here. Now let's update it with a little bit of color. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the logo card and I'm just gonna go to the HSB and put this around somewhere around 90 and 90 here for the saturation and brightness. And then we can just find a good looking color here. That looks pretty good. Of course, we're gonna have to update our logo to contrast that. And then I'm gonna want the rest of these cards, so I'm just gonna hold shift and select them to be similar to that color, uh, but much more washed out. Almost like a white. And then what we could do to make it look even better is grab that color for the background and just kind of have a little bit of that purple in the black. Finally, I'm not gonna end up using that kind of fading effect we had on the side of these icons. So instead, what I'm gonna do is select the actual card itself, go to effect, and we can just do a inner shadow. And I'm gonna set that to the same color as the card background. And then I'll just adjust the blur value and the spread until I get something along the same effect. That way, since these are all built with auto layout, no matter how much of those icons are getting cut off, we're still getting that nice fade effect. And you can see that we have a responsive bento grid using Figma grids. I quickly just took that bento grid and polished it up a bit and we can get something that looks a little bit better. Of course, you can customize these and change these pretty easily using the Figma grid layout. And with that, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed creating this bento grid and learning about the new Figma grids. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe for more content like this, and as always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.